The most common trope of the alt-right of all time is to acknowledge exactly what the problem is, word for word, detail per detail, but completely ignore the reasons behind the problem. And to instead fill in whatever you feel you would want the problem to be to conveniently allow for whatever type of solution you like. Nuance and deeper research be damned, because if you're a member of the alt-right, it's more than likely that you have substituted actual reasoning as to why something might occur, simply to put in whatever solution you like. James Alsop is no different. James Alsop once again has proven he doesn't know what he's talking about, but simply would like to spew out whatever solutions he likes. In this video, I'll be debunking not the idea that pit bulls cause more damage than any other creature on this earth when it comes to domesticated animals, but rather that it's simply not their fault. Because as we all know, if you want to get down to how to solve a problem, you should understand why that problem is occurring. Let's get started on the right foot. I like dogs. Big dogs, normal dogs, small dogs, doesn't really matter to me, I like most of them. But there's a big problem in the dog community, and it's having deadly repercussions for American people. There are a small minority of dogs that are causing an inordinate amount of problems for other dogs, and for people. These dogs are committing acts of aggression that earn all dogs a bad reputation in the media. This small percentage of the dog race is committing a disproportionate amount of dog crime, and doing so under effectively a media blackout. Nobody's talking about this stuff. We're talking, of course, about the pit question. Pit bulls were originally bred in the 19th century as a cross between bulldogs and terriers. According to the Canine Journal, pit bulls are only 5% of the dog population in the United States. However, according to dogsbite.org, pit bulls contribute to 66% of all dog-related deaths in the U.S. 5% of the population, but 66% of all fatalities. Sounds to me like we've got a problem on our hands. A problem in need of a solution. Today's video is going to explore the pit bull question, the PQ. In a time when leftists are demanding full-scale bans on semi-automatic weapons and ammunition, there's another, more dangerous menace skulking around the parking lot of your local housing project or trailer park. We're going to look at the numbers, the science, the news reports, the unhinged owners, to truly explore in depth the problem with pit bulls. I already know that I'm going to get dozens, if not hundreds of comments that go exactly like this. Hey, you big dumb jerk, it's the owner, not the breed. I have a pit bull and he's a great boy. He's never attacked me or my kids. Well, that's probably what Emily Kraft of Missouri thought too, before her two pit bulls attacked a 75-year-old woman collecting cans and mauled her to death. That's right, Miss Georgia Morgan of Gulfport, Missouri was out for a walk when she found herself pounced on and mauled by a pair of pits owned by Miss Kraft. According to a neighbor, Miss Morgan was on her way to pick up tin cans from the Kraft house, which she did regularly, when the dogs decided to jump on her and attack the sweet, church-going nice old lady. Ah, but the dogs were just defending the owner's property, pit defenders may reply. I find it very convenient that you used this as an example and did not put it in the link in your description as to where you got your sources from. Isn't that convenient? When all of a sudden you need to cite your sources, you fail to do so. And why? Well, it's because you probably don't want people to know whether or not this dog had been rescued or raised as a puppy. This is a universal rule amongst all dog owners. If you have a dog and it is a rescue, you should never, ever, ever be let it be around kids without extreme strict supervision. Reason being, you don't know what that dog went through before it was rescued at any age, by the way. This is regardless of breed or age. Well, that's not all there is to the story. These same two dogs have previously hopped over the fence into the neighbor's yard and attacked the neighbor's lab dog. Miss Kraft, the owner of the murderous pit bulls, is cooperating with authorities. She wasn't going to be arrested either, until they realized she had outstanding warrants from an incident in 2017 where her dogs also jumped the fence and attacked someone else's golden retriever. So these two dogs are responsible for mauling a golden retriever, attacking a lab, and now chewing a woman's face beyond recognition. There aren't stats on dog-on-dog -dog bite violence, but if they resemble these statistics for dog-on-human violence, pit bulls are responsible for nearly two-thirds of all attacks. I'm willing to wager that number is even higher, but because there are no stats, we can't determine for sure. We can only base our assumptions on the stats we do have. Pit bull defenders, how can you explain this? The owner apparently wasn't raising these dogs for fighting or abusing or mistreating them. They were simply acting on their own violent nature and instinct, which had been proven time and time again. 
Funny how you can make an argument like that when you don't bother to put your sources in the links in your description at all. We don't know what this owner was actually doing because we can't trace the source back. We don't know if this dog was a rescue or not. We don't know anything about this dog. It's so unbelievably convenient for you to make this kind of argument, and I'm just going to call it convenience, the argument. Let's look at another case. I'm sure there are some pit defenders out there sitting around in their wife beater tank top that are going to take a drag off their Marlboro Black before using their government subsidized Obama phone to reply to this video with a link to cute pit bulls playing with children video or something like that. So yeah, let's talk about the kids for a second. From KUSI San Diego, quote, two month old Gemma Linda continues to recover after pit bull attack. Before we even move on, I'm just going to tell you guys that I've been looking at this article for quite a while, and there is no indication whatsoever as to the background of this pit bull. Again, if you raise a pit bull as a puppy, it's far less likely to be dangerous to other creatures. But of course, nuance be damned. Nuance may not be important to James also, but it's important to everyone else. According to the report, Gemma Linda had just been put down for a nap in an infant bouncy chair when the pit bull of a family friend was startled. As a result, the dog attacked and bit Gemma Linda across the top of her head and face and started shaking her. She was hospitalized with a broken nose, punctured eye sockets, a misplaced jawline, a fractured cranium, torn lip, a brain puncture, and a crack behind her ear." End quote. In other words, the pit bull lived up to its natural inclinations. Resuming the report here, the baby has remained in the hospital since May 7 and continues to recover. According to a GoFundMe page for her, a metal plate has been placed in her head, which may cause complications for her mental development in the future. Her pupils at this point are fine, but she does have a torn tear duct that'll never work again. She has a broken nose, and we're still discussing future cosmetic surgery. She's very stable, but they're keeping her asleep to ensure she feels as less pain as possible, according to the page." End quote. You know, James, I really have a hard time believing you actually give a shit about this incident. You want to know why? It's because you didn't even bother to leave a link in the description below. Well, guess what? I'm going to. So here's the link to the GoFundMe page below. Because unlike you, I don't want to exploit this family's tragedy of a wild dog attacking their child just to prove a point. I actually want this person to get better. So here you go. You're welcome. It's not the breed. It's the owners. Yeah, I don't buy it. You don't see a lot of chocolate labs out there turning sleeping infants into rag dolls. No, but back in the day, you would have seen a whole lot of Rottweilers doing all that stuff back in the 90s, in the 80s, Dobermans, and of course, in the 70s, German Shepherds. And why is that, James? I'm, I'm just wondering why. I'm curious. I'm a curious little boy as to why exactly you would have seen those dogs attacking more people. Because believe it or not, the statistics add up to that. And back in those days, pit bulls were pretty much a minor nuisance that didn't even hurt anyone. Maybe it's because those correlate exactly to what Hollywood decided was the new fight dog. And that new fight dog really shot up the popularity of those dogs to be bought by terrible owners. No, the statistics are backed up. Here's an article from allpets.com. This article specifically goes over exactly what happened. You should really take a look at it because, you know, facts, they're kind of important nowadays and you might want to use them every once in a while. The fact of the matter is this. It really is the owners because there has been no psychological evidence that proves that these dogs are more dangerous just by breed. Just simply by breed. These dogs, all of which I've mentioned, the German Shepherds, the Rottweilers, the Dobermans, and even the Pit Bulls, are all very capable. Very capable of doing damage is the key word. But they rarely ever do. They're oftentimes one of the most friendly dogs you could ever meet. The fact of the matter is this. They are also one of the most heavily abused dogs in the world. In fact, here's an article from PETA talking about how these animals are some of the most abused dogs in the entire world. Pit Bulls really don't have good lives most of the time. But of course, I know you're going to be like, well, what's your solution here, huh? It's simple. To buy a gun, I think you should not have any kind of criminal record. Well, maybe no violent criminal record, but whatever. I think we should also do a lot of background checks and probably even more testing if you want to buy a pet. Because a pet is able to do damage on its own. A gun is an inanimate object. It cannot do anything on its own. But a dog can. And at the same time, we also know that dogs are sentient beings. I have no problem eating meat, but I believe in humane slaughter. And I also believe that no dog deserves to be tortured until the day it dies of old age simply for fun. 
the common sense dog reform you are asking for will not work. It's just like how when people say common sense gun reform to stop gun violence, they know the right's problem, but their solution is crap. So is yours. We need stronger background checks behind dog owners. We don't need to restrict what kind of dogs they have. We need to restrict who's owning a dog. Because a dog is not an inanimate object that cannot feel pain. And a dog is a very, very alive and sentient being. And here's an article from Psychology Today talking about just how much you can fuck up a dog if you really try. The people who do that kind of stuff, who torture animals for fun, I think should be tortured to death. I honestly would be happy watching them all go zing zing as they get put in an electric chair. But of course, this is not a problem for you. Because why would you actually care? I mean, you clearly don't care about any of the victims of dog violence, as you have no links in your description to any of their GoFundMes. So why should you care? You're an alt-right sellout who has no integrity whatsoever, and goes back on his own word when his president doesn't keep up his. So, James, that's my solution, and it's backed by, up by actual facts. You might want to use those every once in a while. We hear all the time from the left that rifles are so-called killing machines, and to a degree, they are kind of correct. A gun is designed to exert lethal force if used in that manner. But pit bulls aren't weapons, or at least they're not supposed to be. They're supposed to be dogs that people keep as pets. Of course, as Scott points out in this article, responsible gun owners can virtually guarantee that their guns won't be used in the commission of a crime, whereas pit bull owners cannot prevent their feral animals from jumping the fence and mauling a toddler. At this point, we're aware of the dangers that pit bulls pose. We're aware that this small dog minority is committing a vastly disproportionate amount of dog crime. But how do the passionate pit bull defenders, who seem to be everywhere online, respond to these damning news stories and pieces of evidence? According to Shannon here, it is just like racism to look at and understand pit bull statistics. It is racist to look at numbers on a per capita basis. Huh really makes you wonder, is she implying that blacks and Middle Easterners are responsible for a disproportionate amount of, oh, I don't know, violent crime and terrorism, respectively? Unsurprisingly, Shannon also doesn't understand how per capita stats work. Never forget the three million innocent pit bulls. I love this tweet. No better way to fight back against the stereotype of pit bulls and their owners being uncivilized and unequipped for modern society, right? But hey, I'm really glad that pro pit bull Twitter is out in force, looking to punish dangerous anti-pit activists through any available means. These people are truly fighting the good fight. You know, I started doing this video as sort of a meme, but after looking into the numbers, I'm actually convinced that pit bulls have no place in modern society. They aren't like guns. Guns are inanimate objects, and in order for guns to harm anyone, they need to be used by a human towards that end. A person has to decide to pull the trigger and decide to commit a crime. Pit bulls are naturally and genetically violent. They can't help it. It's in their nature. Because when logic and reason aren't available, just insert your own answers to all your problems here. Everyone I don't like is literally Hitler, literally Hitler, literally Hitler. Everyone I don't like is literally Hitler. Let's have a look and see. You got Donald Trump, PewDiePie, and Pepe the Frog. Hand signs, free speech, follow Godwin's law. Pro-life conservatives, grammar police, white men, YouTubers, people who eat meat. Yeah, everyone I don't like is literally Hitler, everyone except for me. Everyone I hate is a literal Nazi, literal Nazi, literal Nazi. Everyone I hate is a literal Nazi, let's have a look and see. Jordan Peterson, Nazi. Gamergate, Nazi. Feminist, Nazi. Shakespeare plays, Nazi. Barack Obama, Nazi. George W. Bush, Nazi. Bill Clinton, Nazi. Ronald Reagan, Nazi. Yeah, everyone I hate is a literal Nazi. Everyone except for me. Everything I don't like is literally Hitler, literally Hitler, literally Hitler. Everything I don't like is literally Hitler. Let's have a look and see. Comic books, Hitler. Comedians, Hitler. Capitalism, Hitler. Socialism, Hitler. Criticism, Hitler. Men's rights activism, Hitler. Sexual dimorphism, Hitler. Hitler, 
control. Hitler. Statistics. Hitler. Milk. Hitler. Yeah, everyone I don't like is literally Hitler. Everyone except for me. Everyone except for me.